This video will overview the drive monitor functions, drive command blocks, keypad inputs and outputs, and numeric function blocks. We will finish off by doing another application story. Under the drive monitors heading, you will see a monitor for just about anything that monitors VFD performance. We mentioned this briefly in Chapter 4. Most of these should be pretty self-explanatory. The frequency ref will monitor frequency reference U101, for example. A couple of the blocks that are here that are different are the drive mon 1 and drive mon 2 blocks. These blocks can be assigned to output a numerical value which is determined by how the block properties are set up. So if we right click drive mon 1 block and choose more about, we will have a list there detailing that Q2-11 is the parameter that would be adjusted when you write the program to the drive. So let's say you want to try output power. So that is monitor U1-08 on the drive setting 1. We will close this box. Let's drag the drive mon 1 onto our canvas. And here's the selection window right here under properties. So set that to 1. And now it's going to monitor output power. Just to set yourself a little bit of a reminder of what you set it to so you don't need to decode what 1 means, you could label the block output power. There's also extended monitors. These are the blocks labeled EXDRMON1 and EXDRMON2. These can be used to output even more variable monitors. The default setting in these are 102 and 103. 102 represents the monitor, U102, and the value output by the block will be the output frequency. If you want to output a specific monitor using these blocks, you'll find the drive's tech manual to be very beneficial. You can flip to the parameter listing of the tech manual, which is generally section 11, and there you will find your parameter list, so we want to look at the monitors, so we're going to go all the way to the end to find the U's. Anything that's labeled U is a monitor, so what you have to do is drop the U and the dash and put that three-digit number into the Q parameter for that function block. Now notice on the right side of the table there's an analog output level column that represents the scaling of the monitor. You can only use the monitor numbers that have an analog output level listed here. For example, you can't use U110 because that's a binary value and you cannot output a binary value with an analog output. Moving on, there are logical output monitor status blocks. These blocks with the green on icon will go true whenever the corresponding condition is true. On at zero speed, on a drive fault, during run, drive ready, and so on. So here's a little brain exercise. How would I reverse the logic of, let's say, a run X input? So this one, if we right click and go to the block help and scroll down, we can see that an active run command input or the drive outputting voltage will cause this block to go true. This normally means whenever the drive's in a run condition. So I want the output of this block to go true whenever the drive is not running. Hey look, I pretty much gave you the answer in the question I said when the drive is not running. So if we check the digital functions, you'll see that we can just use a NOT block. Make your connection and run this to whatever else in your program, and it's now going to invert the output. All right, so we jump over a couple tabs. We see that there are keypad input blocks. These blocks will allow the user to interface with the DriverXEZ program through the drive's keypad. The numerical output of this block is determined by the value entered by the user with the keypad. The different blocks have different ranges, all of which are in percentage, and some of the keypad inputs are signed, like either positive or negative, and some are unsigned values, depending on the block selected. Next to these keypad inputs are logical keypad inputs. These provide a logical output, which is determined by the setting of parameter Q110, which can be changed by the user from the keypad or in the DriveWorksEasy interface. Note, however, that q 110 setting is a hexadecimal value, not a binary one. So if Q110 is set to FF, we can see that all the logical parameter bits will be 1. When the user changes it to 9D, for example, then the bits are 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, which is just the binary equivalent of hexadecimal value 9D. Moving onward, we also have keypad output blocks. With these, a numerical value input coming from somewhere else in the program will be displayed with the drive's keypad under different monitors. DriveWorksEZ monitors are all U8 monitors. 
U801 through U806 and U831 through U833 have unipolar ranges of 0 to 999.99%, while monitors U807 through U809 are bipolar and go into the negative 999.99% range. Keypad outputs U822 and U823 are special bipolar displays. What makes them special is that special scaling and special units can be added to the keypad display for both of them. For instance, you could set it up so that the 100% input into the block would cause the keypad output U822 to display 150.0 feet per second or FPS. While we're on the topic of keypad outputs, there is a secondary purpose to the keypad output blocks that is somewhat hidden. If, for instance, you are using a GA500 drive, then you can use any of the U8 blocks to send whatever signal is incoming to the block to also be sent out the AM analog output of the drive. This is easily done by using the Send To drop-down box that's featured in the Properties window of the keypad output block in question. This means that the value being input into U801 could be then output physically from the AM terminals of the drive. This also could be done for the PO or pulse train output, normally thought of as the MP terminal of the drive. If you happen to run an analog option card for additional analog outputs, you could also send a keypad output to the OPT A01 block, for instance. Let's move on to the numeric function blocks. Numeric function blocks include an absolute value block and a negative block, which will change the polarity of the input. There are function blocks for squaring an input, taking a square root, scaling, interpolating, limiting, two digital filters, and a ramping function. Remember that the help menu is your friend here. I will not be showing you how each of these function works. Just right click to see everything that there is to know about any block of interest. Okay, so let's look at another exercise. Refer to exercise three in your application guide. And this is considered chapter six. So this application says, create a new project called Exercise 3, and include your name and company, create a project page called Follower Reference, and use the blocks we have discussed so far to accomplish the following. Generate a frequency reference for a second drive that will follow our drive's motor speed with a plus or minus trim or draw. Frequency reference for the follower drive should be based off of our motor speed, and any trim amount should be entered via a parameter that an operator can access. For example, if the motor speed is 50% and the trim is negative 10%, then the frequency reference sent to the other drive is going to be 45%. The frequency reference we send out must always be positive regardless of the master motor direction. The frequency reference should be sent to several places at once, those being an analog output, a pulse train output, which is terminals MP, and a keypad monitor. There also should be one monitor displaying the master motor speed. Now keep in mind that both motor speed and trim amount can be bipolar, so select the proper parameters and monitors. After you have your project made, compile and download it to the GA500 demo unit. Run the demo unit from the virtual I.O. switch box while monitoring the status of the follower frequency reference with the DriveWorks Easy PC tool and verify proper program operation before proceeding. So just like we did last time, pause this video and try to accomplish this all on your own. Use Splashtop and the virtual I.O. application. Before you write your DriveWorks Easy project, do not forget you need to initialize the drive to clear out the previous DriveWorks Easy project. If you do not initialize the drive, your program may not function properly since it still has leftover DriveWorks Easy functions set up in the drive's I.O. from the previous exercise. You can refer back to Chapter 4 for an explanation of how to do this. All right. Well, let's look and see how we can utilize DriveWorks EZ to fill this customer's application requirements. So right here we have a solution. Starting in the top left, we have our motor speed block. So this is going to be the motor speed of the GA500 drive demo unit that we are connected to. That's going to go out to an absolute value block. And that absolute value block is going to take the motor speed, whether it's positive or negative, and always make it positive. So the follower is always going to be running in the forward direction with a positive speed reference. We tap off that motor speed block and set up a master motor speed monitor. So U809 will display the master motor speed on the drive keypad. Now if we shift down to the bottom right here, these blocks are going to change our trim so Q109 is a keypad input for the trim amount that gets added to a 100% constant block and the output of that add block goes 
up to this multiplication by percent block. We then take the output of that multiplication block and we run it to two keypad outputs. Why two keypad outputs? So that we can specify that the value also goes to an analog output and a pulse train output. We need two blocks to do that within the program. So let's toss this project into the monitor mode. We'll open up our virtual I.O. Now let's give it a run command by toggling S1 and enter in any speed so that I have maybe 50% here on A1. You can see that the motor speed monitor should match up with the percentage you input for your speed. So here's where Drive Wizard might normally come in. We could use Drive Wizard to send values over to the drive, but the problem is that we would have to stop monitoring the program and disconnect the DriveWorks Easy interface from the GA500 since Drive Wizard and DriveWorks Easy can't both use the USB simultaneously. Instead, we can send the values directly from the DriveWorks Easy interface without the need for Drive Wizard. Parameter Q109 will trim our speed. So if we highlight the Q109 block, we will see that we can enter a value for the block and then write it to the drive using the parameter write button. I'm just going to put 10%. Write that to the drive and check to see if the trimmed speed increases. You can also put an input value of a negative in Q109 and that will trim down. Let's put minus 10% here. Write the value. Now I got a negative 10%, so that actually cuts down my total speed by 10%. Now we will go back to the virtual I.O. You'll see that the AM is not displaying your trim speed as it should. If you figure this out, you listen pretty well. This is because we need to program AM to work with the keypad output block we are using in the driver CZ program. So let's change this by dropping the run command, so open up S1. The drive will not allow you to change this parameter on the fly. Highlight the first keypad output block and check the properties box. Drop down the send to box and select the A01 setting. Write it to the drive. Now go back to DriveWorks EZ, give it a run command, and there we go. AM is now outputting our trimmed reference. This works great for any followers that the customer would like to wire off of the main drive. The pulse train output is set up pretty similarly. We will select our other keypad output and set the send to to PO and then write it to the drive. You may notice if you go back to your virtual I.O. that there is no MP pulse train display. We'll just have to accept that whatever the monitor block is seeing, that value will be output by the MP terminals as a pulse train. So great job getting this one up and running. If you have any questions about DriveWorks to Z or how we accomplish this, feel free to shoot us an email at training at yaskawa.com. In the next video, we'll discuss even more of the function blocks and try yet another application story.